I'm Mike, and this is number three in the High Speed 3D Printer Duct Design Challenge, and we have even more awesome and unique designs for our high speed duct testing. If you haven't caught the last videos, I will put a link up there. Otherwise, let's get right into it. There have been some great questions and comments from the last few videos. Does the smoothness affect the duct's performance? I would love to test this, but first we need to get the preliminary testing done. And then we can see whether a smooth resin print makes a big difference over a more textured ABS glass fiber print. Some of you have also mentioned that you think fine tuning the print speed and the fan speed for each duct could be a better way of testing. While I think that is an option, it would also dramatically slow down the process, create far more waste, and likely cause me to pull out what little and precious hair I have left. Once we finish up the first 90 plus test prints, I will be subjecting a smaller group of the top performers to a more advanced testing. First up, we have this very cool duct called the UFO. This one was designed by Rock Salt, and he has quite a bit of experience with ultra high speed printers, and he's been designing his own ducts for high-speed printing for quite a while now. He also has a channel of his own. So if you wanna check it out, I will leave a link down there below. This is a full wraparound duct, but it's still pretty compact and it comes in at 17 grams. This duct looks simple on the outside and very clean, but there is much more going on on the inside than meets the eye. This duct not only has air coming towards the nozzle from these eight different mouths, but it also has a slit around the entire base. I think this may be the first time we've seen a duct with this type of dual cooling approach. This design of duct can cool filament at the nozzle and it can also send cool air to the part itself through that slot. The air coming out of the slot itself leaves traveling slightly externally, which means that it will also want to draw out some of the air sent towards the nozzle as well. Roxalt has told me that this duct design will perform best with a 19 millimeter supply hose. Unfortunately, this printer only has a 16 millimeter ID on that hose, which is also quite long and restrictive. So there may be some issues with the airspeed leaving this duct. Now, if we calculate the total area of the inlet of the duct, which is 113 millimeter squared versus the total leaving 114 for the eight mouths and 76 for that ring of cooling. So this duct is a little bit too open. If we had that 19 millimeter feed hose and we had a more powerful fan to go along with it, it would likely be sending out streams of higher speed air. But for this test setup, it seems to be just a little bit too open. Rock Salt has also added these baffles to block some of the air feeding the mouse directly below the inlet to help balance the duct a bit better. He's also posted an updated version of this duct for a CPAP style fan, and I will link that below as well if you wanna check that out. Let's run the tests on this innovative duct design to find out how it does. For the Shuriken, it produced better results on three of the four sides, and the results on the four sides weren't quite as good as the stock duct. The shaft of the Shuriken was also better though, so overall quite a bit better for that test. The Benji test also produced an overall better result. The hull is better, the bridges are better. The only part that was about the same was the chimney. So again, overall performance was better there too. The next test was the cliffhanger test, and here it produced similar results to the stock duct. Some were slightly better, some were slightly worse. Overall, a pretty good result on the cliffhanger. The last test was the bridge, and here it produced slightly better results than the stock duct. This duct seems to be able to bridge very well, so quite a good performing duct, and considering that it is intended for a more powerful fan and a larger supply hose diameter, this one has some serious potential. Next up, we have this little guy by Dr. Lester the Smith named Summer Breeze. And this is a wraparound as well, but it's a super low profile option, which is easy to print, requires only a couple of supports and doesn't use much filament either. Dr. Lester submitted this immediately after I released the challenge. So he has been very patient. With this type of design, the air leaves the duct at high speeds and directs the air just below the nozzle. It should be fairly precise and should also provide fairly good cooling. This duct is a little bit restrictive. It has 18 small mouths. Each of them have an area of 3.5 millimeters squared. We have a total of 64 millimeters squared versus the 113 millimeter square inlet size. So it will be building up some pressure and sending out air at very high speeds. This one is very lightweight at only eight grams. And because of the design, it is likely sending more air from the rear and the sides than the front to the back. This one comes pretty close to the bottom of the silicone sock, so it may also be at risk of melting a little bit. 
We've seen some others which are similar to this and send quite a bit of air down with speed. So it'll be interesting to see how this one does on those overhangs and those bridges as well. For the Shuriken, we're seeing better results on three sides and then the fourth side wasn't quite as good. The shaft again is cleaner on the sprint than the stock duct as well. So it performed quite a bit better overall than the stock duct on the Shuriken. For the Benchy, we had quite a bit better results here as well. The hull overall looks better. Now you can see that it did struggle up just a little bit higher on the hull though. The bridges were better and the chimney was quite a bit better as well. So overall, a better Benchy here too. For the cliffhanger, these are some interesting results. It looks pretty good from the bottom on most sides at least. But if you look to the side of the model, there are lots of voids. So this duct is doing something different and it's causing a problem in other areas. So overall, this one isn't quite as good as the stock duct. Lastly, the bridge test, and here again, it is not quite as good as the stock duct. We've seen similar results with other ducts like this. There's quite a bit of air which is redirected down as the streams meet in the center. Those first few bridge lines are impacted quite a bit by this, and then when enough lines are in place, the problem seems to go away. So overall, not too bad, and considering how much restriction there is, I'm actually a little bit impressed that this one did so well. I'd like to see this design opened up just a little bit more to take full advantage of that fan supply air. Next up, we have the Fugly Tornado X11NH by Mr. X3D. And the NH stands for Northern Hemisphere. So depending on where you live, you may need to mirror the model for the correct vortex direction. This again is a wraparound design, but it's actually completely different from any we've seen before. This one is quite deep. Fairly heavy, it comes in at 25 grams, making it the heaviest one so far. It has these integral passages to send air out to create a cyclonic action. Mr. X3D has separated this into two levels. The upper level takes the supply air and sends it to each of the sides in order to feed chambers in the lower level on the front and the back. Now, if we look inside, the further the inlet is away from the supply, the larger it becomes. And that too should help the balance of the air, which is leaving each of the mouths. This duct should overall provide quite a balanced supply of air. Each of the mouths is a very unusual shape as well and has an area of 30 millimeters squared. And with the 11 mouths, this brings it to a total of 330 millimeters squared, which so far is the most open duct that we have tested. So this will be interesting to see what happens. The air will be coming out fairly slowly compared to some of the other ducts, but maybe the vortex movement will somehow make up for the difference. Now, if we look to a tornado for reference, I'm curious about the cooling below the nozzle because if we really are creating a vortex action, that area will be a bit of a dead zone. And it'll be interesting here to see if it's a good thing or not. For the Shuriken, it was not able to produce better results than the stock duct on any of the sides, unfortunately. On one of the sides, it produced similar and arguably the same results, but that's a bit of a tough call. So the Shuriken was overall not quite as good. On the Benji, it produced quite a bit better results on the hull. But above that, it struggled to keep up with the reduced layer time, especially the chimney, which came out to be more like a blob. Overall, it came in just below the stock duct here as well. For the cliffhanger, it produced better results on one side than the stock duct, but on the others, they were worse. So overall, not quite as good as the stock. And for the bridge test, this one surprised me. I thought it would produce really good results, but that vortex motion seems to be causing those first few bridge extrusions to move around quite a bit. Again, after some of them are in place, it seems to produce better results. So overall here, not quite as good as the stock duct on these tests. I think this one has some potential if the mouths were made smaller to produce higher speed air leaving the duct, but I'm not convinced that the vortex concept is the best approach yet. It may have the potential of creating that kind of eye of the storm dead zone below the nozzle, preventing it from reaching its full potential. This is a really cool design with some clever ways of balancing the air, but it is also very open. So it'd be great to see one that sends out air a little bit faster to be able to compare. Next up, we have this one by Cosmic Cupcake called the UFO duct as well. And this one made an appearance in one of the first videos where we found a way to bridge a circular shape, which seems like it should be pretty straightforward, but it actually wasn't. And we needed to make some very minor changes to the model to get a good result. Since we learned after that, that the original intent was to print it right side up and the designer thinks that it could have made a difference. So I did do that. The problem with doing it is that there is so little to contact the build plate. So I'm gonna peel these off and see what it looks like and it may still end up being usable. Some of these did not form correctly 
And there is another, maybe even a bigger problem inside here. The bridging that came across isn't really that good. And that may again be because of the circular shape. I don't think this one's gonna perform any better, probably a little bit worse than the other version, but I'll go ahead and test this one anyway. Now this is a full surround duct that's taken to the other extreme. It looks really bulky, but actually it's really light and there's a lot of hollow space on the inside. This one comes in at 19 grams. Because this design uses these very small mouths, we should have streams of high speed air leaving the duct and each one is set at a slight angle to the nozzle as well, which should also create that cyclonic action. I'm curious about two things with this design. One is that we have such a large inside volume. So will that duct be responsive or will it take more time to pressurize that chamber? The other question is with these being so far from the nozzle, will the air be moving fast enough by the time it reaches the nozzle for adequate cooling? This duct is interesting because it uses the full surround, but because of these external diverters dropping down, it also allows some space below for the warmed air to leave. This duct has 16 openings, each at six millimeters wide, which brings it to a total of 96 millimeters squared, not far off of the inlet size. So we should have air leaving those mouths at fairly high speed. I tested both versions and the version with supports below produced inferior results for each of the tests, except for maybe the bridge test, which is about the same. The cleaner first version produced much better results. So for that shuriken, it was able to produce better results than the stock duct on one side and the other three were not as good. So overall, not better than the stock. For the Benchy, the results on the hull were similar, but it was not able to cool those quicker layers in time and the rest of the print was not as good as the stock duct either. For the cliffhanger, two of the overhangs out of the 16 were very close, but the others were not quite as good. So again, not as good on this test either. And for the bridge test, again, not as good. This duct has a lot of great features. My concern is that the air being released from it is too far from the nozzle and that the responsiveness of this duct will also suffer because of the interior volume that it has. If this duct were made smaller in diameter, I think it has a really good chance of being a great duct, but as it is, it's not able to keep up. I would also like to see if the diverters can be made more flat on the bottoms to help them adhere better to the build plate for printing this if it's gonna be printed in this orientation. Next up, we have the Nozzle Hugger designed by No Expert, and this one is different again. It has these three legs which look like they're intended to cool the part itself rather than to cool the filament just after it is being extruded from the nozzle. It has a dense support structure integrated into the model itself which produces a very clean result with no need for me to add supports. There was a problem with this design though and that was that when I created the template to mount these to the printer, I imagined that these three would be the only points touching the effector plate, but no expert went a bit different direction than I expected and filled between them, which meant that the screw heads coming down were a little bit in the way. So to make this duct work, I had to use a Dremel tool and remove a little bit to provide enough clearance for those screw heads. After modification, it came in at eight grams. A very lightweight design and still plenty strong. Each leg has a six millimeter internal diameter, which brings them to 28 millimeters squared each. We have three of them, which gives it an overall of 84 millimeters squared compared to the inlet of 113. So it is a little bit restrictive. It does not have a diverter to direct less air to the back than the sides. So we'll have to see if quite a bit more air is leaving from the rear. This duct sends quite a bit of air downward, so there's gonna be a lot of pressure down. However, because of the position of each mouth, that air will be spread over a little bit larger distance. So we'll have to see how this unique approach to cooling actually works. For the Shuriken, it produced pretty uniform results on each side. Two of the sides look slightly better than the stock duct. One of the sides was similar, and the other one was not quite as good. The shaft was, however, a little bit cleaner. So overall, I would put this slightly ahead of the stock duct here. For the Benchy, this one actually did pretty well. The hull is pretty clean and it seems to be able to cool those really fast layers pretty well too. So it did quite a bit better than the stock duct on this test. For the cliffhanger test, this is a tough one to call because on the 15 and 10 degree angles, this duct performed better on most than the stock. But on the five degree, it did worse than nearly every overhang. So if each overhang is a point, Technically, it performed better than the stock. And for the bridge test, this one may sadly take the bottom spot. It did not do well at all, far below the stock duct on this test. 
Now, because it did so well on the Benchy, it shows that some of the features of this duct are useful, but that downward pressure seems to also cause some problems. So if there were a way to direct a bit of the air below the nozzle and some of the air as it currently is, it might be enough to do well on each of the tests. This duct seems to be more of a Benchy specialist and there is some value in that too. And next we have the Sweeper by Ann Dizzle. This one looks pretty simple, but I think there is way more to it. It has a double opposing type of design, but they're not directly opposite to each other. And each mouth is quite close to the nozzle and it's sending air nearly horizontally. Most of the double opposing designs I've seen send air out at a substantial downward angle. The duct is pretty lightweight at only seven grams. And this duct design uses a uniform large pipe for each leg and then a change begins to occur when it approaches the mouth where the shape both flares out and then also begins to change in height as well. And then it narrows at the very tip of the mouth to increase the airspeed. This has an integral diverter to balance out the sides, but it's not very substantial. Each of the mouths comes in at 47.5 millimeters squared compared to the 113. So we're seeing just a little bit of restriction there. And that's just where the air exits the duct. This duct should be sending quite a bit of air forward to the front of the printer and very little air backward. It should have a very high capability of cooling, but because so much air is leaving in one direction, it could also suffer on the overhang and bridge testing. So let's find out. For the Shuriken, the duct produced quite a bit better results on three sides as well as the shaft. It is also cleaner. On the fourth side, the top looks quite a bit better than the stock duct, but it also took longer to get to that point. So we can call that one even on the fourth side. Overall, considerably better on the Shuriken and probably one of the best Shurikens so far. We're seeing better results in all areas of the Benchy, the hull, the sides, the bridge and the chimney as well. So again, quite a bit better here too. For the overhang test, we're seeing better results than the stock duct on most sides, except for one where the stock duct performed quite a bit better. So overall, again, better than the stock duct. And lastly, the bridge here, the results are also quite good, but we can see that there is some twisting going on because it's sending so much air forward. So that impacted the side bridges the most, but the overall was still quite good. So it was about the same as the stock duct here. Aside from so much air moving forward, there's a lot going for this duct design. I wanted to show you all of the remaining ducts in this video, but it would end up being a super long video. So instead, next week, we're going to have the final group. And I'm also going to provide charts and data so that we can narrow down the competition to the final maybe six ducts. And then we'll perform some more advanced tests on them to finally find out which ones came first, second, and third. So if you want to know what happened, subscribe and notify so that you know when the next video is released. And thank you to my patrons for supporting this channel. I am committed to always providing new and original content created right here in my workshop by me. And if you want to help as well, there is a link down there below. Also, if you're in the market for a printer or filament or some printer related tools and you want to support this channel as well in a different way, I have a very short list down there of good products that I use in my shop and I know perform well. I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care and we will see you on the next one.